one of the ironies of Buddhism coming to the West. This is sometimes you hear the Buddha extolling interconnectedness and celebrating the oneness of all being. And actually, as he pointed out, the extent to which we're interconnected is very unstable. And because it's unstable, it's a cause for suffering. And as for oneness, he said there are states of mind in which you can get the mind into a state of oneness, but it's fabricated and it still contains some suffering. And the way to insight, he said, is not to see things as one, but to see them as separate. Because only when you see them as separate can you get a, an objective perspective on them, to see what they're actually doing. Otherwise the mind tends to go into things, into the worlds of its thoughts. And when you're inside, you can't see the process by which these things are created. So as we meditate, we're actually trying to gain a sense of the mind as something separate from its thoughts, from its perceptions, from all sensory contact. Because it's only when it's separate that it's really secure. Now this would be selfish if finding happiness for ourselves meant taking things away from other people or pushing them out of a space that we wanted. We're actually learning how to inhabit a space we already have that already is ours and nobody else can get into. Because we realize that given the instability of the world, if our happiness depends on things outside, if our goodness depends on things outside, it's very unstable, very unreliable. So we're trying to find a foundation for our goodness, not only our happiness, but also our goodness right here inside. That has to be separate, something that doesn't go up and down with the ups and downs of the world. As you think about interconnectedness, and there are a lot of really stupid people out there making stupid decisions, and they have an impact on us, and there's no way we can stop them. And if our happiness depends on things that are going to be affected by their decisions, we're setting ourselves up for suffering. If our goodness depends on things being a certain way, in other words, I'll be good to you if you're good to me. That kind of goodness is unreliable. So for the sake of your happiness, for the sake of your goodness, you've got to find this spot inside. It's composed both of concentration and discernment. The concentration is what gives you that sense of well-being, simply being here right now, breathing in, breathing out, focused in the body, gaining a sense of the different energies flowing around and seeing what you can do with them. Learning to take an interest in this dimension of your awareness, because it has a lot of potential. The way you breathe doesn't have to depend on the moods of the people around you. It doesn't even have to depend on your own moods. It can provide you with a way of getting out of unskillful moods. When you're angry and you notice that you're breathing in a way that aggravates the anger, you can stop and breathe in another way. That gives the mind a place to step outside of the anger, step back from the anger, see what's causing it, where it's coming from, what appeal it has to you, and to what extent the anger is justified, and to what extent it's not. And you can actually look at what would be an effective way of dealing with a situation. If there are things that have to be changed, what would be the best way to change them? If you try to make this decision while you're in the anger, 
It's like you have blinders. There's a lot that you can't see, and the irritation makes you impatient to come up with some answer right away. Whereas if you can breathe in a way that's soothing, you can step back and begin to realize that some things can be changed right now and other things are going to take time. And if you really want to be effective, and not just simply act on your moods, you'll have to wait until there's a proper opening. So you've got the breath here as your tool. They're giving you an independent place, independent source of happiness and well-being that allows you to step outside of the unskillful things going on in your mind. And it's when you can step outside of your mind this way, that's when you can step outside of the affairs of the world as well. But in addition to having this place, you have to see the value of stepping outside. There are a lot of voices in the mind that say, this is selfish, this is unfeeling, I'm not getting what I want out of the world outside. They can pull you in all sorts of directions, those voices. This is where discernment comes in, reminding yourself of what's really valuable inside. It's a survival of your goodness. You might say that as a Dharma practitioner, you're a Dharma survivalist, stocking up on goodness inside. Because that's something that can't be taken away. Regular survivalists have stocks of food, weapons, whatnot. Not realizing that by having lots of food stocked away, if they're not generous with it, when bad times come, then it's going to be something that's going to attract the attention of the neighbors, and not in a friendly way. So there's a danger even with having a stockpile of food. But there's no danger in having a stockpile of goodwill, a stockpile of compassion, a stockpile of virtue. And those are the things you really need for the survival of the mind. That's where insight comes in, reminding yourself that you are not your body. You are not limited to this life. This life is not the end. When this life ends, that's not the end of everything. So you have to ask yourself, what do I want to take along? What would be good for me to take along? Well, the good actions you do create good habits in the mind. Those good habits in the mind are things you carry with you. There's an image in the, in the Dhammapada that the good that you've done will be like relatives waiting for you on the other side, glad to see that you come home. So keep that perspective in mind. A genuine survival is survival of your good qualities. So when you have this combination of concentration, there's a sense of well-being that you can build on, and a sense of the value of your good qualities, then your goodness really is independent, because it's got a separate foundation, a foundation that all those interconnected things can't touch. And only then is it safe. And only then are you safe to be around, as long as your goodness depends on things being a certain way. And all of a sudden they're not that way. You can't be trusted. So even though you're doing this primarily for yourself, other people are going to benefit. But you've got to work on developing this foundation, especially as you go back into the world of daily life. You find that this person pulls at you, that person pulls at you, all the different voices that are out there. 
they're going to pull you in. You've got to maintain this sense of being a little bit separate and be okay with that sense of being separate. Realizing that that's where genuine security lies. We like to think that our relationships with other people are what will give us security. But you look at yourself, you're a very changeable person. As the Buddha said, there's nothing as quick to change as the mind. And it can change into all sorts of things. That applies to your mind and everybody else's minds. So. Ultimate security is not in relationships. It's in having this separate place where you're harming no one, you're not harming yourself, you're not harming the people around you. You're not taking anything away from them. And you're developing a good stockpile of goodness that will radiate it out from this separate foundation. So it's not like you're running off and forgetting about the whole rest of the world. You are keeping them in mind. You're being responsive about how you look for your happiness. And there's so few people in the world who are responsible in that way. You realize that the, your search for happiness also entails a search for goodness, and as you're stockpiling both inside the mind. The things that are worth surviving inside will survive, and they'll radiate a happiness and a goodness around them. <laughs>